So this next session, I'm very, very excited about. And, and when we first started organizing the event, we got together the working group of the, the peer outreach workers from the Greater London Authority and people from Future Leaders Network, and we spoke to Extreme, and we said, what do we want people to learn from this event? What is really valuable for young people who want to be climate leaders to gain from, from this event that we're organizing? And one of the first suggestions was a grounding in the facts of climate change so that we all have a common starting point and are, are familiar with the science. But then, not only that, but then a kind of emotional reaction to that and the, what that means to you and how you're going to take action about it personally. And so I hadn't heard of Climate Fresk before that, but I just Googled, you know, workshops, climate science, climate facts, and it was the first thing that came up, and I read it, and I was like, wow, this is exactly what we had just spoken about and envisioned as a group, and it exists, and I got in touch with Climate Fresk, and there are wonderful facilitators available to uh, facilitate this workshop, and they've agreed to come along today and deliver it to you, so I can't tell you how lucky we are that this amazing resource and workshop exists and how excited I am to take part. I'm going to come along to one of the tables. And so I'm going to hand over to Ash, the lead facilitator from Climate Clarity. And he'll introduce the session and kick things off. Uh, and then we'll get, get our hands stuck in. So thank you very much. And over to Ash. Thank you, Theo. So welcome, everyone. We're going to be taking part in a climate fresk. Uh, and I'm going to go into saying a bit about what that is now. And I think it's no secret as to why it's so important. So, a quick thing, we've got a big team of facilitators here today. Give us a wave if you're a facilitator. Um, there's 15 of us, I think, in total, and their names are on the board as well. And we're all, yeah, part of this larger community of 52,000 facilitators around the world delivering these workshops, over 1,000 in the UK. And why are we here? So, there's going to be a little bit of movement here. Uh, I want you to think about how much do you know about climate change? If you think, ah, oh, you know, I've got my PhD in climate science, come up and you know, touch the seats at the front. If you haven't heard of a climate what, touch the seats at the back, but just place yourself somewhere around the room that means to you, like, how comfortable would you feel talking about the topic of climate science? Okay, so closer to the front is, I know loads, closer to the back is, I've got loads to learn. There's a bit of dancing going on. Okay, and wherever we are on this journey, uh, we're going to learn something today. And an important thing to remember is there's no gatekeeping talking about climate change. You don't need to be a climate expert. And that's one thing that we want to stress here. And even our facilitators wouldn't claim to be climate experts. We're just here to facilitate. So, but on the topic of knowing lots about climate change, all of the work in the cards we're going to do today is sourced from the IPCC reports. Who can tell us what's the IPCC? Someone put your hand up. Yeah. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And what do they do? Thank you. Yes, the IPCC is working to actually create a, a meta-study, bringing 50,000, 60,000 peer-reviewed papers uh, to get a good understanding of climate change and make it available to policy leaders and everyone else. It's creating an overview of the picture. So by the end of the workshop, as we've gone through this, all of us will be able to stand closer to the front. So my next question is, how concerned are you about the climate crisis? With this end being... I'm really concerned, you know what, eco-anxiety is a thing. Uh, to that end of, you know, no worries, no big deal. Okay. <laughs> so to our person kneeling on the front, could you say why you decided to go here? I think I would have gone there <laughs> if I could have. I'm just super worried. I think we, yeah, we all know why we're here. Um, if we don't do something now, if we didn't do something 100 years ago, yeah, it's going to be very painful for a lot of people and a lot of species. So. Thank you very much. Very painful. Yeah, and that's why kind of processing that information, processing that pain is going to be the middle part of our workshop today. We're going to be talking about, you know, how does it live in the, how does it feel to live in the middle of crisis? Because looking at key messages of the last IPCC report, humanity is the cause of climate change. 
We're heading on track for around three degrees of warming by the end of this century without a reinforcement of current policies. Around half the world's population are extremely vulnerable to climate change, i.e. it's not going to be ending well. And drastic change is needed at all levels right now. So, my last question is, how convinced are you of the strength of the response to climate change? We've, we've got it, it's in the bag. Our leaders are doing really, really well and it's on track to, actually no, the ambition isn't there. Where are you going? Come back. Yeah, so there's this gulf between what we're feeling, how we're feeling, and where we want to be. So the last part of this workshop is about action. How do we, as future leaders, use our influence and our power to be agents of change, maybe continuing a journey you're already on, or encouraging you to go even further or start one if you haven't before? Because it's one of the biggest challenges we've ever faced as humanity and we need strong systemic awareness uh, from all stakeholders. So, luckily, I think the Climate Fresque is a really good way to do this, because we're not going to be reading the IPCC report. It's quite long, we didn't have a lot of paper. Some people quite upset or excited. Not reading, okay. Um, yeah, instead we're gonna be playing the Climate Fresque that was invented by a Frenchman called Cedric Gringenbach about uh, five years ago-ish. So how does this work? I've already laid out to you. We're first of all going to be playing with some cards on the table to build a system of how does climate change happen, building a complex causal system. And you'll be working in groups to do this. Next, we're going to be going into some communications and creativity exercises for around the middle. We'll have our lunch break, and we're going to come back for about an hour on action. The ways that we play this game for this card section to start with is you're going to be in groups around tables, working with a facilitator who is going to lead you through starting with these first seven cards, thinking how do these cards relate to each other? What causes what causes what today? We're building a chain of causality. This, well, it leads to this, and that leads to this. And you're going to be working as groups, so we're using our time wisely and equitably, sharing it between us. If we're, you know, we're standing at the front of the room earlier, we're an expert on this topic, take a couple of breaths before answering any question. Slow down, give other people space, so we can all have a chance to participate. Uh, we don't want our participation to be a block to someone else's. And equally, if you're standing to the back and you don't really feel that comfortable in this space, I invite you to go for it and die big. Really take the chance to throw yourself into these questions or ask even more questions. But knowing that we are okay to make mistakes here, we're gonna make a lot of them and that's how we learn. And we're ending the workshop with action. So we're going to be careful of our time because as much as we need to know about the climate crisis, we really need to start taking action. So let's make sure we get there. With that in mind, some of you have numbers on your tags, your tables. I want uh, no less than four people on any table and no more than six people on any table. If you've got a number, uh, I recommend you go to a table that I point out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and find your facilitators there. What does fresk mean? Well, fresk is a made up word, as you said a bit earlier, Hash. Uh, it means, it refers to fresco, which is a visual representation. It's usually what is on the uh, inside of caves uh, painted by cavemen. How long ago and for what reasons did you start finding fresk? Uh, well, I started a, a year ago and why did I start? Because I did the workshop, I found it was very good and very communicate, complex idea in a very sharp format. So I, I thought, okay, there is a crisis, what can I do? It sounds like the, a good action to grab and I'm going to start with that. I started two and a half years ago and at that time I'd been a climate activist for two years, uh, working hard at trying to facilitate and help groups. And I came across the fresk and thought, oh, this sounds really interesting. Took part, went, wow, it's incredible. And I remember I first did it with my parents and my mother stayed until 3am talking about climate action afterwards and I went, this is something special. And so since then it's been amazing to, rather than be on the outside saying, we want climate action, going, actually, let's come talk about climate action and people really engage with it. Yeah, I guess it's about making that education accessible. When you get feedback from the workshops, 
what's the most sort of surprising thing that you hear people saying about it or what are current like sort of themes and patterns that people will have when they sort of yeah, give you the feedback? People most commonly say I thought I knew and I didn't know. So they feel enlightened and uh, yeah, a certain humility yeah. come across. What if there was one takeaway from the workshop today that you want people to take home with them, what would that sort of message or really that be? I think that every single um, tenth of a degree counts and that any small actions also will count. Yeah, seconding that and that we all have the ability for leadership and agency and it's about being ambitious and thinking where can we create change. I'm going to hand over to Ash to kick off Climate Fresk Part 2. And uh, yeah, so over, over to you, Ash. Um, really looking forward to this. I loved the first part so much. I'm so excited to have you here. And once again, really grateful to all of the amazing facilitators as well. Thank you. So I'm going to be really brief. We've seen the problem, and you've all seen it a million times before, but hopefully this has shown some new light looking at it from a bit of a systemic perspective, seeing how it runs through. Our mission together is to find out how do we go from a world that is emitting more GHGs, more greenhouse gases this year than last year and the year before that on this constant upward trajectory to a world where we're going in the other direction. This doesn't look like tweaking at the edges. It doesn't look like a soft transition. It doesn't look like just electrifying some things and it'll be okay. The UN tells us it's a total radical transformation of our society. So I want you to bear that in mind as you go about your climate activism. So we're going to go into the debrief now, where we're getting into what are we going to do, and your facilitators will take you through this process. As we go through it, some things to remember just as we go in again are these are conversations that will continue on after today, but today we have less than an hour to have these conversations. So make sure to spread the time between your group, using it wisely. Remember that someone on the table might have a different strategy, a different way of moving forward, and that's okay. We're not here to try and uh, convince each other that you have the right way, I have the wrong way, etc. cetera. Uh, we're seeing how can we work together and collaborate, and we can figure out all the details a bit later. And I also want you to really think about where do you have power? Avoid generalizations like, we should all do this. If that, you think that's the case, your actions you're going to talk about is, I can convince people to do this. So really keep it rooted in the I. Keep it rooted in your own power. What are you going to do? And I love this next cartoon. It's about taking ambition. As young people, we can't take all of the problems of the world on our shoulders. Uh, it's far too, far too big. But also, we don't want to just tinker around the edges and do something small. So how can we find the right actions that are joyful and collaborative and really, really changing things? Uh, so yeah, finding that Goldilocks zone, if you will. And my final thing I'll say before we get into it and the facilitators take you back over is something I heard recently at Reset Connect. And I found it quite inspirational, which is uh, we don't do all of this. Uh, we don't receive the world from our ancestors, receive it from our parents, receive it from the leaders before us. At uh, every stage, uh, we're stewarding the world because it's on loan from the people that come after us. We're just borrowing it. They're the people that come next have to live in it. So let's think about what we're going to do. Over to your facilitators now. Let's go do it.